रीडिंग फोर्टी सिक्स बेसिक्स ऑफ डेरिवेटिव प्राइसिंग एंड वेल्यूशन कॉन्सेप्ट नंबर वन द रिस्क एवर्जन ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स रिस्क न्यूट्रल इन्वेस्टर्स आर दोज विच एक्सपेक्ट हु एक्सपेक्ट रिस्क फ्री रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ओनली दैट मीन्स वेदर दे इन्वेस्ट इन गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स और दे इन्वेस्ट इन कॉरपोरेट बॉन्ड्स दे एक्सपेक्ट रिस्क फ्री रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑन एनी ऑफ दीज सिक्योरिटीज ओके वॉट इज रिस्क फ्री रेट ऑफ रिटर्न यूजली द रिटर्न ऑन गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी रिस्क फ्री बिकॉज दीज आर बैक बाय सॉवरेन गवर्नमेंट्स एंड वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट दैट दे देर वोट बी एनी डिफॉल्ट इन केस ऑफ गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स सो द रिटर्न ऑन गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स ऑन सॉवरेन गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स इज कॉल्ड रिस्क फ्री ऑन दी अदर हैंड बॉन्ड्स इश्यूड बाई कॉरपोरेट एंटिटीज यूजली हैव अ रिस्क फैक्टर इन्वॉल्व बिकॉज देर कैन बी डिफॉल्ट इन दिस केस so these are considered to be risky than government bonds however risk neutral investors do not differentiate between the two and they expect risk free return from both kind of bonds next is risk averse investors they expect risk free rate of return plus a risk premium if they are taking any risk so this is what any rational investor will do right if government bond which is a safe bond is giving risk free rate of return then to convince a risk averse investor to invest in corporate bonds the issuers will have to offer something more than risk free rate of return so for that they will offer a risk premium that is a return over and above the risk free rate to lure investors now note here that risk averse investors do not mean that they will not invest in risky assets it only means that higher the risk higher is their return expectation and the last category is risk seeking investors who expect rf minus risk premium what it means is that they enjoy risk so much that they are ready to sacrifice returns for such investments that means if government bonds is given risk free return which means that since corporate bonds are more risky than government bonds they love this kind of risk they enjoy this kind of risk and because of that they are ready to sacrifice their returns even if the return on this corporate bonds is less than the return on government bonds even then they are okay to make such kind of investment now you must be thinking what kind of mad category of investors is this then think it this way that there are many people who visit casinos right do you think that everyone goes to casino to earn money the answer is no many people go to casinos because of the risk that is involved in the game okay the risky game is what they are looking for concept number 2 pricing the underlying how do we determine the price of an underlying it is very simple if a security is expected to give $100 in the future let's say one year later then what should be the price of this security today based on time value of money it should be the present value of this 100 right so we discount this 100 to today's value and the present value of this 100 will be the price of this security right so so this is what the formula says s0 means the spot price zero means today this is time t is equal to 0 means that that is today and a capital t by capital t we denote expiry okay so spot price as on today is equal to est e means expected and st means spot price as on expiry so this is a, is the expected price as on expiry so we discount it by a discounting factor which is risk free rate plus risk premium because a rational investor is considered to be a risk averse investor so he will expect a risk free rate of return plus some risk premium for assuming higher risk right and this gives us the present value of future benefits and that is the price of this security today however this will be the case when there are no cash inflows or outflows in between right but if it is a bond in that case we are going to receive interest during the term of this contract so there will be some benefits arise before the expiry and if it is equity then there can be dividends if it is a real estate property then there can be lease rentals 
so there can be uh, different benefits associated with different class of assets similarly there can be cost as well if it is a commodity then there can be storage cost there can be interest cost there can be insurance cost right so these are some inflows and the and these are some outflows so what impact are these going to have on the price very simple if we are going to receive something in the future then the present value of such benefits will increase the price of the security that is why we have added it and if we are to make an expenditure in this regard then that should be reduced from the price of this security okay higher the benefits higher the price higher the cost lower the price then there is this concept called net cost of carry this is nothing but the later part of this equation that is benefits minus cost now be very careful in this case that although the name is cost of carry the equation is benefit minus cost which means that if the figure is a positive value then it is actually going to be a benefit and not a cost but still the term is called net cost of carry next the meaning of contango this means that if the cost is greater than benefit then the net cost of carry is negative right then this equation will give a negative value and this will indicate that the future prices are greater than spot price well to understand this mathematically you can simply replace the expected spot price with the futures price and in this equation when we see that cost is greater than benefit in that case you will uh, solving this equation you will find that the futures price will be greater than the spot price but thinking of it naturally with a more logical approach i can give you the example of oil in the commodities market okay in case of oil we can see that the cost of storing oil is higher than the benefit of storing it that means the net cost of carry is negative so what it means is that if oil is priced let's say 60 dollars per barrel today one year later i am going to need oil and uh, the futures for uh, one year is trading at let's say 65 dollars per barrel are people still going to buy these futures the answer is yes in case of oil no one wants to buy the commodity and store it rather people are willing to buy the futures so that the commodity can be delivered to them in the future when it will be needed and they can save themselves from the hassles of storage okay so such situation when the futures price is greater than the spot price then we say that the market is in contango this happens when the asset price is expected to rise over time in our example oil prices are ever rising and definitely they are going to rise over time and this leads to an upward sloping forward curve that means the forward prices will be rising at this point it is worth mentioning the incident of uh, april 2020 when the there was a global lockdown in the major parts of the world because of the coronavirus pandemic in that case what happened people were not willing to buy oil at all okay no one wanted to buy oil in the spot market everyone wanted to shift it to the future as a result the futures price were rising very much and the spot price was declining at a rapid pace the spot price declined to such an extent that the market price in the spot market for oil went to negative there was a negative price now this is something which cannot happen in theory so as a result the gap between the spot price and the future price became very very high so that was a very extreme case of a contango market and a group of traders in uk could take advantage of this situation they could predict this situation to happen and uh, they were able to make millions in just a couple of hours the opposite of contango market is called backwardation when the costs are less than benefit in that case the net cost of carry will be positive and this will lead to a reverse uh, or the opposite scenario that the futures prices will be less than the spot price so you can uh, think of the situation that that the spot price is higher than the forward price so in future the prices are declining that is a downward sloping forward curve so this will indicate that the investors are expecting the price to fall in the near future all right then there is concept of convenience yield which is one kind of benefit 
that a security can offer. Usually this convenience yield is associated with commodities and this means that and this means the non-monetary benefit of holding a commodity in physical form. For example, gold. What would you like to have? 1 kg of gold on papers in, in your paper investment, in your digital investment or 1 kg of gold physically delivered to you? Well, many would say that the value of physical gold will be higher for them because this gives them a, this gives them a kind of satisfaction that they are having physical gold in hand.